Sir. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me always say it is extreme pleasure to be at these conferences. I've been coming to, this is my fifth conference, I think, came to the first one in New York City. I come any chance I get because this is a bastion of truth and justice and the American way. Uh, but uh, let me say I've got a couple of handouts in the back, by the way. One is an article by Dr. Neil Frank, former director of the National Hurricane Center, kind of one of my mentors on all this global warming stuff. Uh, Climate gate, you should be steamed. He got this in as an op-ed piece in the Houston Chronicle. The other one is just my little list of links uh, for lay people, some technical stuff on this whole issue that I put together myself and have shared with many, many other people. Uh, but uh, by the way, I, I, I consider this such a privilege that I normally come on my own time, and I have this time, uh, because usually they won't give me time to come for something like this. I say, this is important enough, I will come anyway and just do it on my own time. And I brought my daughter, Rachel, uh, over there, just graduated from high school. and. Uh, that's my fourth child I've brought. Now, if they do the next conference in Orlando, someplace close to Miami, maybe I can bring the whole brood of 11 kids. Uh, but uh, anyway, is climate change causing more hurricane disasters? And by the way, I have a talk that I gave at the 7th ICCC, and you can do a search on YouTube under my name. You'll find that, some other videos, because that really covered a lot of the research and a lot of the people saying there's been these huge increases, and it was a very detailed scientific talk on that, and I encourage you, if you're interested in the topic, to go look on that. Uh, this picture, by the way, is inside the eye of Hurricane Diana, which I flew in in 1984. I've flown through the eye of storms over 100 times. And uh, I'll tell you, on a storm like this, it's awesome beauty. It's a 10-mile high eye wall, awesome beauty from sea to sky. And your mouth just drops open no matter how many times you've been in these things. And it's hard to remember that in that eye wall are massively destructive winds. I take these storms very, very seriously. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, that's right. I'm supposed to press the button here. Do it right. There we go. Uh, now let me talk about some. Uh, did I go to? Yes. Okay. My answer to that first question is yes, kind of. In other words, climate changes, or I like saying climate fluctuations. Try that. Climate fluctuations. Okay. Do affect overall regional global hurricane activity, especially the number of stronger storms, major hurricanes, super typhoons, other names in other basins. I've spent much of my career studying and publishing research on the relationship between hurricane activity and various fluctuations in climate. All climate scientists accept the reality of climate change or climate fluctuations, period. Now, as far as this topic, other people have mentioned other scriptures. I love this from Proverbs. He that is first in his cause seems to be just until his neighbor comes and examines him. So that's where we debunk a lot of this stuff. They say, yeah, look at all these figures, look at all these charts, and then you, you challenge them. But the issue is a confusion of terms, because if I'm going to talk about climate change, I want to say what I'm talking about. AGW, anthropogenic global warming, otherwise known as Al Gore warming, okay, is not the same as global warming. It's not the same as climate change. I mean, they get to the point where they just say climate, and you're all supposed to think of man-made global warming. And just because the climate changes and there's fluctuations doesn't mean it's AGW. Weather disasters doesn't mean it's AGW. Inconvenient truth in most of the media, this is very important, they're not talking about AGW, they're talking about CAGW, catastrophic anthropogenic global warming or climate change. And there's numerous scientists, as we know, who don't agree that we'll experience catastrophic AGW, but we can experience catastrophic climate change. There could be huge swings in the climate. I know people are saying we're going to enter an ice age now. We're going to, they don't know. Uh, it's just educated guesses. Okay, the debate is masked by media and sadly at times scientific censorship, bias, and distortions. So this is the AGW mantra. And in their mind, AGW equals ACC equals global warming equals climate change equals climate. If it's hotter, it must be everybody. AGW. If it's colder, AGW. Wetter, floods, AGW. Dry. I mean, this is literally what they're saying, and other speakers have been saying. More snow, less snow, more hurricanes. But fewer hurricanes? No, we don't. Oh, you know what? I, I apologize. I've been changing mine and uh, on my thing here. That was the last slide. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. And here is the slide I'm on now. Uh, I'm sorry. If it's hotter, colder, wetter, everything... Uh, Fewer, but fewer hurricanes, they don't want to call that AGW because that's not bad. 
And the latest science based on global climate models, and the reason I have an X for El Nino there, is because there's not a single global climate model that can reliably predict an El Nino, reliably, right. two to three months in advance, and they're expecting us to believe 50 or 100 years. They're good for sensitivity <laughs> studies, but you have to take them with a lot of grains of salt. So the current consensus is that the overall numbers of storms globally might decrease 50 to 100 years, but there'll be a slight increase in intensity of the stronger storms. In other words, there has to be something bad. They saw the storm numbers going down. Yes, but the stronger storms will be stronger. And they say, we expect this. This is likely. And I say, the models suggest it. You know, if I had reviewed those papers, I never let them get away with those words. They suggest this could happen. The problem is it's an almost, uh, anybody say change if I haven't changed. I'm, I'm, uh, not used to this. The models suggest this, an almost non-verifiable hypothesis. Why? Because the observations, you have to wait for decades for this to happen, so they can say it all they want, and we might never know if it's really true. The key issue is how much can we trust the historical and even the current database, uh, the observations of hurricane intensity. That's some of what I'm going to uh, talk about. So I'll change this. Okay, let's talk about Hurricane Andrew. Uh, some of you might have seen me in some TV special, heard my story. I had a baby the night before, uh, Rachel's older sister, born 12 hours before our house was destroyed. Uh, the middle picture is my house. That is a concrete poured, steel rod reinforced tie beam ripped in pieces. Uh, that's Andrew in that morning. On the bottom, uh, you can see that little uh, wall there in the middle, and on the right, that's where nine of us were during the worst part of the storm. The wall fell on us and was propped up by a counter on the other side. And if you want to see that, by the way, you can go on YouTube, again, search for my name, and you'll see hurricane portion of Cyclone Special, and it's quite a story. But the, the issue is 1992 was a slow year overall. In other words, it was this global warming. Well, here was a slow year. Just one major storm happened to hit Miami. If it hit 15, 20 miles to the north, the damage wouldn't have been 25 billion. It would have been 85 billion, like Joe talked about, near misses. Now, this is the problems with the data. Okay, the storm hit the hurricane center. This was 931 millibars, category four hurricane. Okay. Then we're in a little talk at, at the uh, Hurricane Research Division, and someone happened to mention, hey, I have some friends who had some, some um, uh, pressure uh, readings and stuff from Andrew, and we were collecting all we could get. So he said, yeah, these were really low. They checked him. They calibrated him. They said, oh, it's 922. If they hadn't gotten that, it would have been recorded as 10 millibars higher. Then 10 years later, based on these sons, drop sons, 10 years later, uh, they decided Andrew wasn't a Cat 4, it was a Cat 5. So here, even in these recent times with all the data, we still don't know exactly how strong some of these things are. And it was basically an analysis of the difference between the winds at flight level to winds at the surface. It's not that we had drop sons in Andrew, uh, but... Uh, let me go to the next one here. Let's talk about Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina, was it AGW or was it the levees? Miss, New Orleans got the weak part of the storm. I was flying in Katrina when it made landfall. There was not a single surface measurement stronger than Category 3, uh, and yet 30 feet of storm surge hit Mississippi. The pressure, amazingly, was 911 millibars before, right before landfall, and it was Category 3. Again, difference in measurements. What are we doing here? Okay, difference in measurements that we can't even measure exactly sometimes. It took two or three months for the Hurricane Center to knock it down from Cat 4 to Cat 3 at landfall when they looked at all the data. Bay of Bengal hurricanes. Okay, horrible, 100,000 people killed in 2008, I was believed. Is it, thank you, is it AGW? Well, let's look back at the historical record. Like Joe said, you got to keep looking back. And here's years with half a million people killed. Well, maybe, as the arrow showed, AGW is making it less deadly. Uh, okay, Hurricane Sandy. This is from a quote from uh, Cal Beisner, Neil Frank's article uh, that they wrote, and I can't go through the whole thing, but it's the issue that they're saying, yeah, it's because of, it's because of all that sea level rise. Thank you. Wow, I'll get used to this. That's it. Well, you know what? I want you to see that how it went down, and uh, then uh, half a million. And here was Sandy. Uh, and all due to the, the sea level rise from global rain and stuff. 
And if you look at this, and you can all look back when it's archived, is that uh, the sea level rise from substance, maybe from global war, whatever, is so little compared to what happened from the high tide and, and, and just the straight storm surge itself. So we don't think this was anything unusual. Nobody at the Hurricane Research Center said, oh, I can't believe Sandy's happening. You know, I can't believe what's going on here. It was another hurricane. Uh, then we have Super Typhoon Haiyan, who hit the Philippines in 2013. Global warming, people were shouting, this is the strongest typhoon ever. Well, I like saying it was the strongest measured. Okay, by satellite. There wasn't even a recon in it. If you know how many times the satellite measurements are different from our recon measurements, and believe me, I trust the recon and the instruments we drop a lot more than satellite, which is an estimate. Uh, the, and their deadliest storm wasn't even that. In 1881, 20,000 deaths in the Philippines. Uh, then you have hurricane damage in the U.S., okay, adjusted for inflation. So look how it's climbing up and up with the decades. And is that AGW? Well, the problem is if you adjust it for population and the value along the coast, it flattens out. That big spike is from the 1926 Great Florida Hurricane. And uh, that particular storm, uh, if that hit today, we estimate it'd be $100 billion in damage. Thank you. Uh, go whiz through the rest of this. Uh, I'm the last speaker, so I'll take two extra minutes. Uh, but uh, Hurricane Mitch, Category 5, uh, late October storm. It was such a shock to see such a strong storm in late October. Is this global warming? Is something different happening? Killed 10,000 people by flooding Nicaragua, Honduras. Surprise late storm. You had Wilma in 2005. But you know what? Guess what? You look back on the historical record, and October major hurricanes were a common thing before the low activity area in blue, where there was only two for 24 years. Now the average is once a year for these October major hurricanes, nothing unusual. And in fact, of the six deadliest on record Atlantic tropical cyclones, three of them were October. So you look back again in historical record. Uh, and in fact, the study done by myself, Bill Gray, uh, Chris Lancey, Alberto Mestres Nunez, and published in Science in 2001, looked at this multidecadal uh, I am so sorry with this. Uh, there's the October stuff. Looked at the multicadal variability. So you have several decades more storms, several mm -hmm. decades less storms. These increases are like nothing ever predicted by people with AGW. These are huge changes from these high activity era to low activity eras. And uh, this shows back to 1870 what drives that is this Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. Uh, all the way back to 1870, you can follow it. Brexley, warm Atlantic, cooler Atlantic, warm Atlantic. And this shows with the hurricane activity. Now, one thing you have to notice this, this is Net Tropical Cyclone Index, a measure of overall activity developed by Bill Gray. But if you look at this, you'll see that the previous decades don't look as busy as the current ones. Why? Is that, you know, because of anthropogenic global warming, why is it more active? We believe it's the data. And I, because it's the end here, uh, this is something, again, you could look at online when they post it. There's so much change in the database and the observations we look at. Sorry? Uh, and uh, if I close this, I won't forget. Uh, and in, there's temporal non-homogeneity. In other words, through time, we add satellites. We change the measurements on the satellites. The planes, the OBS on the planes change constantly. I'm in the middle of this. I fly. I watch how they do the data. So when I look at a storm that was measured in 1950, you treat it very differently, where they had someone in the bottom of the aircraft looking down at the sea state and trying to estimate what it was and then coming back, and their commanding officer says, no, we don't believe it can ever be up more than 140 knots, so we don't even accept your observation. I mean, all sorts of things. Uh, but changes, changes, changes. And then you have the spatial non-homogeneity, just where the data coverage was. Uh, and let me just show you these two slides by Chris Lancey, finishing up here, uh, from his EOS paper. I just love these slides. And what this really is, this shows the percent of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic counted in a year versus the number of landfalls. So what happens is before you had reconnaissance, on the left there, most of the storms had hit land because they were measuring the stuff way out there in the Atlantic. 
And finally, in the modern era, you're measuring a lot that are out there, like 2005 hurricane season, super busy. Look at 1933, another super busy, but nothing in the eastern Atlantic because we didn't have satellite. We didn't have the planes out there. So we missed all sorts of things. Therefore, all sorts of maximum, all sorts of intensities that we didn't know. So when it says, this is the most intense storm, it's like, we don't know how intense the other ones were. And by the way, that ACE plot they keep showing, that's a cumulative cycle in energy. Uh, the top thing is globally, we don't even know how accurate this is. Come on, the ACE measurements change so much, and you're looking at other bases that don't have recon. And uh, the satellite, even the quality of satellite, in 1987, they started the Dvorak technique for, the, for infrared satellite. And believe me, that changed everything on how they measured these storms. Uh, and in summary, uh, the historical studies have to, you know, if you take careful use of the reliable parts of the historical record, there's cycles, but no discernible long-term, excuse me, long-term trend. The really problem is just disasters are getting worse, some of them because of the in increased vulnerability of people on the coast. And there's tendency of some in the media, government side, as you know, to attribute almost any increase in natural disasters to AGW. If it's bad, it must be AGW. If it's good, they won't do it. Uh, focus needs to be on continuing improvements to hurricane track intensity miles, which is something I'm working on now, understanding the real hurricane threat, public awareness, and preparedness. And Russian proverb, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Thank you very much.